Stephen, you're all about guys who have toughness. Who's uh, who's setting a tone for you, toughness-wise? Right now, we're. I mean, that's across the board. So I would say I'm not gonna. I wouldn't single someone out immediately. I'd say across the board, we have to because of how many reps we're able to get and how fast we're able to go. The fatigue is kind of setting in. So now we're trying to figure out who actually is the toughest out of the group. So. It's been multiple different people. I want to say like a Lander Peterson was like last week. We had a Weston Wright, we had a Caleb, and then we had some of the younger guys that came up, like a Dennis Wilborn. Um, there's multiple kids um, that are showing toughness. The problem is we're not doing it all together currently. So that's what we're trying to weed out with all this tempo that you're seeing right now. Um, <clears throat> with this offensive line having lost three guys who played quite a bit, uh, how, how do you feel just about your ability to successfully replace those guys and play at a high level i think it i think i want to say it's easier to come in and, and start fresh with a new system with losing guys opposed to trying to reload with guys that i mean that, that sounds crazy but everybody has a clean slate so now you have true competition so that's the biggest thing that i like about the fact that we're here right now and we lost three guys because now everybody has to learn the same system whereas there's kind of a sense of if it was still the same system the person that was the backup would immediately be like oh i i'm i'm fitting in there where now everybody's in a competition mode and that's where we bring what you said earlier the toughness out of it with uh, i guess with Cade briggs being projected as a center and with him being limited this spring, what does that position look like? Um, that's I mean we're I, I'm a firm believer in four snappers at all times. So so you got you got Cole Spencer who snaps in his downtime. You got Cade. You have Clayton Franks and you have Dennis Wilborn. You have a, a kid like uh, Rod Key who's going to be snapping, and then on top of that you get the Ty Yonta kid snapping. So I find a good rotation into that. But I make sure that during my travel team I have at least four guys that I know can move over and snap because we all know if the ball is anywhere except for in the chest of the quarterback, we're we're, we're a bad situation so I'm a firm believer in making sure you have a backup center and to the third and fourth degree so everybody's gonna get the same amount of reps whoever comes out I mean they'll, they'll you'll you'll know pretty quickly because I'll I'll be taking it once again very personally <laughs> uh, and I saw Briggs out there the other day but I guess he's not he doesn't do anything physical but no contact yeah all he does he, right right now he's just he's going he's just learning our plays and he's just snapping and he's doing he's doing everything he can right now and Spencer is what's he what's he doing? Playing he's coming. He, he'll be he'll be back with us in the he'll be back with us in the summer. So he got he got here he got here later on. He's just training right now. We got to get him back up to speed before he has contact. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Chad. So where do you kind of see uh, Buchanan kind of fitting in with the offensive line? I see. I mean, I see him as coming in and, and pushing the right tackle spot. I mean, he was the right tackle, and the and the beauty of it is with him. With uh, Clay McGuire coaching him last year, who went off to Washington State, and he has an idea of the offense, and that's why it's so intriguing to get a, a get a kid like that. And so, that's how that whole situation goes. Because I like the fact that he can hear the terminology, and we're already a step ahead. Whereas if I took somebody from, let's say, a JUCO or a random school transfer, all of a sudden now, you know, I'm teaching him a whole new offense. This should be very familiar with him. It'd be a little bit more run heavy with with the terms, but that's why the pass game he he he's got a good grasp on it. A couple weeks ago, you mentioned the quote that off the field, you want your offensive linemen to be those guys that will help an old lady cross the street, but on the field, you want them to be the scariest dudes on the field. So, how have you been able to instill that mentality in them? So far? it's an every day. I mean, it's one thing. It's it's one thing I know as 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 being coached by by Coach Hard. You have to. It's you got to be consistent. So, me as an offensive line coach, I'm not going to be nice to you one day and then all of a sudden it's going to be okay. The the best thing about when these kids finally figure out who I am. I'm very high intensity when it's bad, and I'm also very high intensity when it's good. So, I mean, you're going to get a lot of congratulations out of me when you're doing it good. You're going to have to feed off of that, and it's going to be the exact same thing as if you're if you're doing a bad job. I don't like the it's okay or you know, everybody's going to it's all going to work out. That's not life. That's not at all. So I'm not I'm not going to put up with it here or outside of this because as, as soon as I, I do that to them, they're going to walk out in the real world, and it's not going to be. There's no no film for correction. They just walk in. They say you're fired. So that's kind of my, the mentality of how to do that. I say stay consistent and stay the course and don't relent. What's uh, uh, Clayton Franks has been here uh, a long time. He's played a little, but not a whole lot. 
there's an opportunity there for him. How well is he doing with uh, with that opportunity? He's doing good. I mean, he's got he's the biggest thing is he's got consistent snaps, and he knows he, he's very smart, intelligent with the fronts. He's having to learn. There's a lot more responsibility now, so he has picked up the calls. He has picked up he has picked up everything. Now it comes down to his overall strength. Can you manage this uh, this offense? Because we all run off of you. But I've been I've been very thrilled with what he's what he's done so far. What about uh, Michael Shanahan? How's he looked? He's doing good. He's he now he's having to learn the situation, and obviously the speed's a lot faster at this level. So he's having to pick it up. He he knows there's about three or four plays that he knows to the T that that they ran at uh, UT Martin, and now it's kind of we changed the pass pro a little bit. It's not more we're more point of attack and try to actually put our hands on. We're not looking for any run by. So. That's the way that we got to transform a couple of the kids that are transfers. They got to learn it. That's why when Cole's, you know, when Cole's actually, he's got his breath under himself. It's going to be really good because he knows his whole system. And Jacoby Jackson is a guy that showed some potential last year and was also kind of on the cusp of playing. Yeah. What have you thought of him? I think he's got. I think the sky's the limit for him. I really do. I think he once he gets once he turns the baby fat into the into the muscle, he's got everything. He's a, he's a technician when it comes to uh, the bull rush, and he can lock down anybody on our team. So once he gets the just the the steps and the techniques down, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with, in my opinion. Still uh, an interior guy, or could he play some tackle? It would take some time for him to move out. Right now, I want to just stick with him at interior. It makes it makes it makes life a little bit easier. I can I can save him there. Your coach kind of building on Jackson. I saw you get it on the work. Was that something that you guys try to work on with? Always. I don't. That, my biggest thing is I'm not. I'm not interested in them doing their own thing. It's. It's the steps are put in place because of the plays that we have, and it's not how you feel. And I know there's everybody has a different opinion. I'm not a more how you feel. I. I have to put you in the best position. So I will be very harpy. And it is the step. The step will save you, and the technique will save you. So that's what we go off of. Uh. What about uh, Jack Tucker? Another guy. There's another young guy. How's yeah, he's up. I mean, he's going to be an up and coming guy. I mean, he's he's still a puppy. He's he's done a really good job gaining weight. He's going to be about like once he breaks over that threshold of like the 300, 305. That's when I really see him soaring. Right now, he's getting bull rush because they know they can just do it to him. But technique, football wise, coming out of high school, he's he's one of the few that uh, I've seen around the state that comes out with. He he's got a no wall, uh, like an overall where of where he's at on the football field, which is huge. For you know, an 18-year-old, which I believe he's only 18. Yeah. Your uh, initial impression of Monroe Mills? He's going to be—he's he, got all the intangibles, and he's like a baby. He's a baby fawn right now, and once it all comes together, he's going to be scary. He's going to be very, very scary because he knows the offense. His body's trying to figure out. His body's trying to catch up to speed with what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Got time for about two more. Uh, how's uh, Ethan Carr looked? He's doing good. He's, he once again we had to we flipped him. He's he's played left and right over the years. Put him over there on the right side to see how how he could do with that. We got to open up his hips and and he's got he's got a real shot. So we'll see we'll see how he progresses in this offense. I guess Caleb is obviously a guy that I mean Caleb is a guy that needs to be right at the top of your list of yeah. top guys, right? Yeah, and it's, it's and it's one of the things of it's it's more learn it, understand it, and master it. He has all those capabilities, but we. We, we always kind of bypass. All these kids are really young. Outside outside of, outside of Cole, these, this is a young group of kids. Whereas, like right now during spring ball, you're used to like you know I'm, you're limiting reps of your of your senior. You know what I'm saying? You're pulling quarterbacks. You're trying to figure out who the young up and coming guys are. That's not the case right now. We are actually moving forward with players, and they are getting all of the reps. Whereas I'm not even worried about a rep count right now. All right. You know Dave. You know Dave Nichols. Oh yeah. Steve. Yeah. Dave Nickel was actually my GA here when I played. And I've kept him in contact. We, he was at my bachelor party. That was one of the most phenomenal humans I've ever had. He was, uh, he was probably my biggest encourager. Um, there's two guys, and he's one of them, and my biggest encouragers on this team. And I love that guy. And it was really sad to see um, what happened because he's, I've seen him fight through everything for the past like five years. and. and I'm, I'm glad he was very. The last, the last conversation I had with him, he was ec ecstatic. He was on Manhattan Beach. He was having a great time, and then it kind of all set in. But we lost a phenomenal human that day. Yeah. If you tell us kind of just you know general first imp per impressions after what three weeks now. Okay. Who's, who's going to stand out? No doubt. How's no doubt about. Uh, really like the direction that we're going. Um, obviously, don't think we're there yet. Um, you got a good group of older guys. 
when you look at Tony Bradford and uh, Jalen Hutchinson that, that's really coming today and being leaders out there. Um, one of my surprises of the camp, I wouldn't say surprise, a guy that's taken those steps to become a better player is uh, Phillip. I think that he's uh, approaching it with a, a, a physical mindset. And, you know, anytime that you see a guy that, that for three straight practices, that he's the last guy to walk off the field, not the last D lineman, but the last person to walk off the field, you like that. You want to, it's becoming really important to him. We're going to keep pushing him in, in that standpoint. Um, as other guys, I, gotta, I feel like that that's right there on the break. Um, just getting those guys with Duda Banks. Um, we got Blake Burris over from the offensive line. And one of the things I love about him is that he, he's coming and he's working every day to give us everything he got. It's a lot of technique things that we need to start putting uh, more of attention to detail with it. Um, but you look at the unit and you see guys that, that really is making an impact. You want to keep that going. Um, really want to be physical at the run and getting those guys to really take that step, their first step, extend with their hands and get off blocks. Uh, that's what we want to bring to the table. And, and uh, right now we, we're getting told to, to stay away from the quarterback. It's a big deal. I look at that as a positive and a negative. You need to stay away from the quarterback, but if it's up for discussion, that means we're getting there. Um, and so I'm really excited about that too. You had a bunch of all Big 12 defensive linemen at yes. TCU. Yes. I think you had somebody on all Big 12 each of the last six, half dozen years or so. Yes, sir. What, what do you think the key, what, what is the key to that? Is that because y'all were good at identifying talent or developing it or just the whole well, thing from start to finish? You, you know what's, what's, what's fun, and I was actually telling my wife this the other day, uh, it's a lot of similarities from where I'm coming from um, and where I am now. And, and how and with the recruiting process, you know, one of the things that as a, as a young coach at TCU, you really wanted to get a lot of speed, a lot of bodies, guys that might not be playing the position that you're going to evaluate them for, but you see the traits. And with James Blanchard, Coach McGuire, Coach Nance, um, those guys that's doing that in our back with our young guys, Sean and Jake, they do an unbelievable job of seeing talent. You know, that's one of the things that I thought we did a good job and that you saw those guys do when they're at Baylor and they're, they're bringing it right here to Lubbock. It's seeing things that other people might not see. They, other people might think he's an offensive lineman. Um, one of the guys I coached that was a second rounder, first pick for the Houston Texans, Ross Blacklock, he could have went anywhere in the country, but it was offensive line. And we took him um, and the, the kid, I mean, he just loved football and you, you teach him and you believe in him. And I mean, he approached it well. And, and then you look up and he's uh, he's the freshman defensive player of the year and, and playing on Sundays now. So just looking for those traits and try to find the things and fit, get guys that fit you. We don't care what anybody else thinks, who fits us and who wants to be a part of our brand. So how's uh, Larry Moore's transition going from offensive line to defensive line? Well, I mean, you know, most coaches when you, during the recruiting process, they look at a frame. They look at a frame and they say, well, this is the prototype offensive lineman. Well, we, we don't have that approach. I look at this and I see traits that can transition to also to the defensive line. Just because you're 6'6", six, six, doesn't mean you gotta play offensive line. It, you know, but most people, they say, okay, he's 6'6". Six, six. Uh, we don't know if he can play with pad level or it could be a kid's demeanor that, you know, they might say, ah, oh, you know what? His demeanor is more of an offensive guy. I think that's all in about the coach. Um, I think um, kids really um, tend to have the behavior and the actions and reflect their coach. So even though he's an offensive lineman in high school, you think that when you come play, um, I think we can get you to do what we want. You know, Coach DeRuder's the defense coordinator, but uh, at TCU, you know, you guys ran a lot of two down and two stand-up ends. Are you yes. going to do some of that as well? Yes, no doubt about it. Um, I love Coach Deruda. Uh, it, it's pretty much fun. Yeah, um, our Panther package, they're based out of a 4 2 five. Um, and I, I came from TCU under Gary Patterson, so I come from the motherland of the 4 2 five. Uh, I love his different variations. Marcel Yates, when he was at uh, Boise, he, he visited TCU during this time. we come down and learn it. So it's a lot of different, different in a lot of ways, but uh, a lot of the same concepts to work off of it. 
Uh, I love that even when you get into our Oki package, when you got a kid that, that uh, we, me and CJ coach like Tyree Wilson, I mean, like when you got to locate um, a, a person of that, that stature and that fast, I, I really think it's going to be hard for, for offenses to, to locate him and get ready for um, where we're going to put him at each week. Yeah. So. Which you all have talked a lot about him being used as a stand up guy. Who else kind of would fit that description? Um, would be like uh, an edge two point uh, stance guy. Um, I would say when you, when you look at those guys, you look at, you know, uh, Wooten is another guy. When you look at uh, JP, uh, I don't know JP's whole name, I just call him JP. But uh, our, our outside guy from Florida, uh, big. CJ usually works more with those guys. And when they kick inside, I usually take one of those guys and find a mismatch, depending on who we're playing. Yeah. So. Which I was going to say, the guys in your room are mainly the tackle type bodies. Like yes. Tony and Jalen. And, and then Phil when and we go into our Oki front, I pull one of those guys that's an outside guy inside of my room. Yeah. So. And then coach, you talked about kind of like that 6'6 six, six type of frame. That's yeah. what Tyler Cole is. So where do you kind of see him fitting in with this defensive line? Who? Tyler Cole. Tyler Cole. Or. So uh, Miles, Miles Cole? Cole? My bad, Miles Cole. Yeah, yeah okay, I can talk about him because he signed the, uh, the, the yeah. financial aid agreement. Uh, really excited about Miles Cole, uh, you know, we haven't been one of those teams that, you know, came in and cleared out, you know, somebody else's kids. These are our kids when we got this job, and we didn't want to approach it that way. Uh, we had a young man leave, and it opened up, and I didn't want to be a guy that just offered so many guys in the uh, transfer portal. So I was being really picky, uh, probably overlooked some guys that other people was going to jump on, uh, but I got exactly what I saw, the traits. You know, you see a 6'6", 295-pound body, uh, I like my chances. I really do. Um, I'm always going to bet on me. I'm going to work hard for my kids and my, my kids' player, my players and my, my players' families. So when I saw her, I thought it would be a great addition to, you know, you see that young man and you see Tyree Wilson adding more length to the group. thought that, you know, when you first come in, you, you looked at your guys and you said, this is things that I want to add to them. Uh, really looking forward to him getting here and learning the defense. Uh, he, he, he's all in. He's a great human being, great family, uh, girlfriend. I just can't wait. They're coming up for the spring game, and we're going to get started. And then going to Tyree, since you guys have started putting on the pads, how has he looked in one-on-ones? Or well, Tyree hasn't been going through a lot of the practices right now. Um, I'll let you ask uh, Coach McGuire about that, just trying to make sure that we're, we're looking after him and that he's all good. Got time for about two more. Tony and Jalen uh, obviously have played a lot of football. Mm -hmm. uh, how have y'all uh, have you got have y'all kind of gotten along? How, how's your chemistry well, with those two guys? Uh, it's fun. I think you know the one fun thing about um, being in the state of Texas and recruiting the state of Texas. Even if these guys don't come play for you, you're gonna you're gonna build those relationships with those guys during the recruiting process. So those are guys that I all all went and seen, did evaluations on, met them, probably talked to them on, you know, Twitter or something of that nature. The thing that I love, even though they're older guys, they're willing to learn. This is a new defense. This is we we obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna be a, I'm a different coach and it's a different style, but un making them understand the hand placement and things that I'm looking for, and also just making sure they have an attention to detail, how they do things and how they finish plays, and letting them know that they, they have to be the standard for the young guys. And then obviously playing in the Big 12, you have those offenses that go really fast tempo. So how have you guys been able to condition or work in those guys and make sure they stay well, healthy? Well, you know what's fun? You, you talk about um, the Big 12 and they're, um, you know, all the offenses go fast. Well, I don't, I don't think you understand <laughs> Kitley. Hey, uh, I'm pretty sure that we, we're getting enough of those looks from, from our offense to know, um, to get our guys to get in shape. They send it on a daily day basis. And I think that helps more than anything. But I uh, say so be ready and see it because they can, they can turn it on like this. And uh, I mean, Zach, I mean, he is what he is. He's one of the best in the country. All right, thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Coach.